Hey, it's the Rooster Bobby Leach for the TimesWeekly.com alongside my partner Ooh. here. Uh, what? Uh, Big Tone? Uh, pair, next to a pair of underwear. Next to a pair of underwear. What are you doing? Uh, I'm, make, I'm making my list. We're going to Champagne. I'm making my list. <laughs> you know, he's, you're making your list for, for Christmas. I'm making my list. Make sure, make you sure want I, underwear for I'm, Christmas? I'm packing. I'm packing. The you still believe in Santa? Champagne. Oh, I believe in, in the peanut butter. I believe in... You believe in Santa? I believe in apple pie. I believe in Chevrolet. I believe in everything. Uh, Miss, hold on. You keep talking. You keep yakking. Hey, keep yakking. I'm making my list. Okay. <laughs> well, who are you gonna be? What, what kind of list is it for? My so um, snacks for the road. I'm doing. Do we, do we, need, do we need snacks for the road? I think you should go look for some Twinkies for the road. Oh, I'm sorry. You're not gonna find any more Twinkies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. Okay. There you go. All right. I'll hey. make that later. Yeah. So. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Hey, hey, Miss. Hey, it's Big Tone. <laughs> How's everybody doing out there? Licking way east. Was there ever any doubt? Yeah. Ever any doubt? Thirty-one to nothing halftime score. <laughs> I was giggling. Bennett people weren't happy. Okay, I was giggling. I try. You know, I'm supposed to be partial. I'm supposed to be a partial uh, reporter. But <laughs> okay, I mean, my team the whole year since uh, week two, Montini. Like I said last week, guys, you beat Carmel, Montini, Providence, Bennett. Four Catholic schools. Does that make you guys bad? Should you guys go to Sun to church and you know say a couple more of these? You beat, you beat God's team. <laughs> well, I mean, hey, it was a great it was a great contest, and uh, it just it once again it, it pointed out some great players in you know Lincoln Way East is solid from top to bottom, and honestly, I mean, all kidding aside, that's probably the best football team uh, that we've got to see in in three years. Really, I mean, you know, and I don't want to I don't want to fill their heads because I mean. I'm talking about complete team from top to bottom, from soup to nuts. You know, Lincoln Way East is, is strong everywhere. I mean, their offensive line, who hasn't gotten a ton of props all season long, uh, I mean, they've gotten props, let's face it. You know, every you hear every week, Tom Fusil credits his offensive line, and Nick Colangelo credits the offensive line, as they should, by the way. But you don't see a lot of their names in the media and, you know, I you know I took some time to kind of look back over the, you know, I had all week, you know, and it was only a, there's not as many games to, de- to contend with, so you can really focus on certain games. And you take a look at some of their offensive linemen, and you're like, wow. You know, these kids are, I mean, it, you know, it's the little things about that football team. And in this case, the big things, because you're talking about an offensive and defensive line. But it's the little things on, uh, you know, on a team that, that um, you don't realize that there's, there's two crushing pancake blocks that freed uh, Fusil off to, to bolt 60 yards for mm-hmm. a score or, or, or Colangelo. I mean, the fact is is that this team, when they need the two yards, they get it. I mean, if it's fourth and short, they're going to get it. And, you know, you know they're going to play Glenbard West. I mean, that, that, that a couple of years ago, I saw that game against Glenbard West. And, you know, Blake Winkler was a junior then. Uh, they were playing, I believe, in a quarterfinal at Glenbard West on a Saturday afternoon, as I recall. It was a nice sunny day. You know, it wasn't bad weather. Glenbard West plays on a grass football field, um, but man, are they solid? I mean, this, this, you know, for for you folks that have not uh, seen Glenbard West play, I'm going to tell you right now, there's a reason why they're in a state championship, and they were state runner-ups a couple of years in a row too. You know, I mean, this is a team that's perennial downstate uh, program. They know what they're doing, um, and and Glenbard West is going to be a tough challenge for Lincoln East. I think it's going to be the first time all season long uh, that you're going to see. You know, two behemoth matchups. I mean, I, this is going to be a game, a slugfest. Um, if they can, if they can contain Tommy Fusel, and I think that you know it, it could be a, a a tougher day for Lincoln Way East. Now, here's where Lincoln Way East has got it. You know, my eyes is when they get downstate, they've got to they've got to rely on the running game beyond Fusel because Fusel they're going to key on you. And I'm going to tell you that that. You know, I guess, I mean, if, if Tommy Fusel is to go down there and have a typical, you know, 200 yard performance, three touchdowns, I mean, now you're talking about, you know, you know MVP state. I mean, you're reaching the stratosphere uh, against that defense. So if he has a typical game against Glenbard West, then there's a lot more to be said about Tom Fusel. Um, but their offensive line, you know, is going to go up against a great defensive line. I think that's where you're going to see, you know, Glenbard West has got an outstanding defensive line. I think three of the four kids are, are Division I uh, uh, football players. 
and you've got a, a, a pretty stout, great offensive line, you know, anchored by one of our, and we're going to get to our, our little list here. By the way, for all you football players out there, yeah, we got a list to talk about. It's a Rooster and Big Tones all area team. We're going to we're gonna announce that today here on Cheap Seats. But, um, you know, there are some really good football players on both sides of the ball. Both coaches, it's a toss-up. I mean, they're both very good coaches, and they're both been there, done that, you know, uh, been in the tight games. I mean, so, you know, you can't – I don't know where the coaching advantage comes in. I think really what this comes down to is Lincoln Way East is going to have a big, ga- a big day next Saturday. And uh, I believe their game time – I haven't looked – uh, exactly at the game time yes, because I to heard. be honest with you, it doesn't work anyhow. Their game times are, are off a little bit. Tentatively four o'clock. It's tentatively four o'clock, but it's usually five o'clock. But you know, because there's all the the two games previous, they're playing four games in a row. They go five a, six a, seven a, eight a on on Saturday, and obviously one, two, three, and four a on on Friday. Um, you know, but again, I, you know, I, it'd be interesting to see how you know this game shakes out. How you know each team handles the nerves downstate. Um, you know, Blake Winkler was there last year representing Lincoln Way East, but he was there representing himself as an all-state player, and, and uh, Tom Fuse will be doing the same along with a couple other guys uh, uh, for, for Lincoln Way East this year. But, but um, you know, it's going to be interesting. I, I, I mean, I just don't think that, you know, this is a game, um, you know, let's, let's put all bygones aside and look at, you know, their, their season up to this point has been phenomenal. And they've blown through every team. Mm-hmm. But I don't think you guys are going to blow through Glenbard West. What do you think? Yeah, I expect them to blow through Glenbard West. You know, they're going to key on, everybody's going to key on Fusel, but now Fusel's a dual threat. He can throw the ball. He can throw the ball on the run. He can throw the ball dropping back in a five step drop, a seven step drop. I mean, uh, he can throw the ball, do a little pump fake, and he can take off. I mean, he's, he is just, you know, unbelievable. Nick Calandro, their power running back. Inside, Justin Corbett outside. I mean, uh, you've got. Uh, Blake Winkler's uh, a younger brother. He's a receiver. Caught two touchdown passes in a row. Okay, one of them was called back. They did the same play. Called it again uh, on Saturday night. I mean, well, I mean, what else can you say? Nick Allegretti, uh, uh, anchor in the offensive line. I think he's up to the task too. What his, his offensive line mates? Yeah, he's he's a pretty special player. And, and uh, again, that's what oh, I'm talking shout about. Out, shout out to Mrs. Allegretti. She's an avid Cheap Seas uh, fan. What are you? Shout out. <laughs> are you guys paying him to say this stuff? I'm sh- sh- I was told that she was an Andy Chiefs fan. All right. And I just want to give her a shout well, out. Thank you for watching. But, uh, you okay, know, back, back to the show. Let's get back to the show. Okay. okay. Stay on target here. All right. I'll stay on task. Right. Read the cue card, will you? Stay. Tony, stay on task. Okay. 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 Bye, all right. There you go. All right. So, in any event, um, you know, uh, yeah, there's no question that, that Lincoln Way East is a well rounded. Uh, a ball club, and they deserve to be in the state championship. And you know, like the Bennett coach said after the game, you know, you know that's the best football team that he has seen. That's the best football football team he has seen. You know, hats off to him. I mean, obviously they just beat him. So what else are you going to say? That's not mm-hmm. the best football team you've seen. But I mean, it, you know, but it really is. I mean, uh, you know, Lincoln Way East has been very calm. You know, the thing that struck me about looking at the film afterwards, all the stuff you brought back. Mm-hmm. Is uh, how calm they were, how cool. You know, I mean, I guess if I'm if I if I know I'm going to the state finals, I don't know, man. I think I'd be jumping up and down, going crazy, and you know, and and doing somersaults on the fifty yard line. Mm-hmm. And these guys didn't do it, which tells me that actually impressed me because I think it, it, it what it says is, hey, we ain't done yet. Mm-hmm. You know, we haven't done nothing yet. We're just we're just we're, you know, we got a bus ticket down there. You know, and we'll see if we win. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, a pretty impressive night overall. Great season, undefeated season. I mean, what else can you say? What else can you say? How, did your, how, how, did, how did your team do? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what do you mean, my team? How did your team, that you know, Julie Catholic do? Well, my my team did okay. Did they? Yeah, they did. They did, they did good. Did they? Julie Catholic won. Did they? <laughs> maybe maybe on a maybe on a John Madden game. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, Julie Catholic again. You know, um, it came down. You know, this is boy. Joe Catholic had to face a lot of adversity this year. Uh, with with they were never at full strength in the in the in, in the regular season, other than week one, and it, actually the first half of week one, when they when they met Providence and Providence beat them. Um, you know, Isaac goes down. You know, Providence comes out with the win, and from that point forward, it, it just seemed like nothing. Not, not everything was clicking. But I will say this: before we get into you know, well, before we get into you know the 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 winning and losing. Montini is sensational. 
Or for going for Monte, you know, I mean, I don't really want to talk so much about how Joliet lost the ball. I want to talk about how Montini beat Joliet, mm -hmm. and they not and they beat them, you know, in a in a not so convincing way in the first half because the first half, Joliet Catholic, Joliet Catholic kicks it to them, kicks some booty. They kick some booty. I mean, that was their be that may have been their best half of football that they've played in two seasons. Yeah, their defense kicks some booty, too. Yeah, their defense kicks some I mean, they, they, you know, they did pretty good. And so Montini made an adjustment at halftime and, and put up 26 points in the second half. That's where the failure was for Joliet. That's where the success was for the Broncos. Uh, you know, the fact of the matter is there's a reason why Montini is playing for its fourth in a row state title. In, in 5A, which is, I, I mean, that's, dude, that's, 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 that's phenomenal. That's that's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's unbelievable. You know, and and the bottom line here is, is you know, Joe Borsellino, come on. Mm -hmm. You got to give that guy, I mean, you got to give that kid props. Yeah. I mean, pound for pound, one of the best offensive players out there. Yeah. You know, um, and he came up big for, for Montini, yeah. too. So Receiver running out of the Wildcat. Right, mm -hmm. right. I mean, uh, so, uh, you know, I, I just, I, you know, I don't know that you can say, you know that that hey it was it was Joliet's Catholic's game to lose. I, you know they had a big lead, thirty-one seventeen at one point in the game, and then something you know something jarred inside of Montini and and uh, you know but I did hear that you know that 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 um, you know Ty had probably ran as tough as he'd ever run mm -hmm. in a game, filled with emotion. Mm -hmm. You know, on the sidelines, he was pumped up. You know, on the field, he was pumped up. I mean, he really wanted to win this ball game last year, coming off the field against Montini, uh, up in the uh, press box at, at uh, U of I Stadium. You know, uh, he was pretty upset, and but he was calm, cool, collective. He's more upset because his buddy Malin Jones, who's now at Northwestern, by the way, and uh, number 20 at Northwestern, for those of you who, uh, who are watching on TV. Um, you know, he... Uh, the, the the two of the, that pair they really wanted to win a state championship and no matter how good his performance was against Montini, wasn't good enough. Mm -hmm. And it the same was true yes uh, Saturday. Uh, unfortunately, I mean uh, you know it didn't matter how well Ty Isaac did because he did pretty well. It was how well Montini's offense responded. And when the chips were down, you know Joliet scores uh, is up uh, three points. You know there's they're they're a little better than eight minutes left in the game. And, you know, Montini, you know, took advantage. Mm -hmm. And and here's the thing. I mean, let's talk about the, the play of the game. The play of the game, and, you know, we'll show you a clip of this right here. But... <laughs> Borsellino with the one-yard touchdown plunge. Extra point is blocked, leaves the score at Montini Broncos 40. But one thing that, that um, you know, they had said after the game, and Borsellino said after the game is, we're at Montini and we go for the win. We play for the win. We don't, you know, we're not playing for a tie. We're playing for a win, and we'll always play and always go for the win, and that's what they did in that situation. And they called time out there, Coach, Coach brings everybody to the sidelines, and you know those kids were in the huddle going, Coach, let's just go for it. Let's just take these guys down now. Let's go for it. I mean, they had time left. They had another timeout left. So, you know, had they had they gotten the first down, let's say they don't get into the end zone, they're just a little bit closer. It makes it, you know, the percentage of that field goal goes up and up and up. And uh, But, uh, you know, to make things interesting, they could have gone up seven, or I'm sorry, up, up four. They should have gone up four. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, J.B. Butler... Came in through, blocked the extra point, and left Joliet Catholic that little bit of hope, that little sliver, 30 seconds left. And, you know, uh, you can see at the end of this uh, game here, you took it. Craig Sloak took a sack, critical sack there. He probably should have got rid of the ball, got rid of the ball near midfield, uh, took the sack, and, and that really, I think that really put a, a fork in them. I mean, they did have a couple of plays after that, but that was it. And I know you were, you know, here again, Coach Stone was, was eating this up. You were telling me, oh, you just call me up. Your boys are losing. Your boys are going to lose. And, uh, you know, and, and like I say, I mean, uh, I, am a, I am a fan of the kids at Joliet Catholic, of those specific kids at Joliet Catholic that I coached. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with that? Mm -hmm. Is there anything? What? Nothing. Keep going. Please. You're, you're, <laughs> you're, you're intriguing. Please. <laughs> But like I said, I mean, I, I, 
I think um, you know Joe Lake Catholic. They can't they can't get past Montini. I mean Lincoln Way East had their cross to, to to get over, which was week two of the of the playoffs, mm -hmm. and Joe Lake Catholic's got to figure out a way to get past Montini because you know they've ended Joe Lake Catholic season with a loss three of the last four years. Fourth and one play, tie. Give the ball to Ty Isaac. Ty Isaac stop. Montini scores. Okay. Yeah, right. Montini right. scores. All right. Now, why don't you get? Why don't you put the ball in the hands of your best player? You know, on that fourth and two, Ty Isaac. Why didn't you do that? Why? Okay. This is my opinion and my opinion only. Okay. There you go. All right. You have no faith in your defense. You have no faith. Okay. Well, I mean, I, listen. I, I, I don't know that that. That that's not that far from the truth because I'll tell you what, you know, Montini, we've said this before too. They run a spread off, they're gonna spread you out, they're gonna put four or five guys wide. Mm -hmm. And and that's a scary look for the Joliet Catholic defense, and it has been for a couple of years, and let's just be honest here. Their defense has struggled against the pass. We they, we 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 watched it last year, okay. All right, we, yeah. I was sitting in the end zone yeah. the whole time. Well, we had and, to stay in the end zones because and, every end zone was, was filled. All I, all I, as I'm watching, you know, I'm watching everybody. I'm watching, say, Jordy Wester Camp and everybody else. I heard the team from Benny Hill going through my head as everybody was <laughs> running around. Okay. I mean, okay. Same here. Same here. Yeah. Same here well, today. I mean, the team from Benny Hill. I mean, you guys, you guys got to learn how to play defense. You got to learn how to tackle. Okay, well, that's that's. Hey, let's let's go back to the old. Here, come here. I, you know, what, okay. what, what was it? What, what did we do? Eagle, 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 eagle. rap, head on the ball, head on the ball. Go ahead, head on the ball. Head on the ball. <laughs> See? Okay, face mask on the ball. That's right. Rap. You guys right. gotta wrap got up, it. and you gotta put your face mask on the ball and hope for a fumble. And, you, you and, and it's okay to chuck the receiver. I know you guys are Catholic school guys yeah. and everything, but it's okay to chuck the receiver. <laughs> you got five yards. Well, I, I mean, ultimately, look. I mean, we can all play coach, and you know what? We're gonna play coach because that's our job. That's why we got a show, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, we got a show. <laughs> we got a show. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, it's like, look, you, you know. I know that every kid that's that's playing football is out there doing his best. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna down any kid or any program. Oh, I'm not downing down nobody. No, you but know? the but the fact of the matter is 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 you know, it, I don't know that it's not necessarily just tackling, but it's also it, it, it's coverage. It's coverage. It, it's coverage schemes. I mean, there's got to be something more to you know in the off season that can be done. To, to address the you know the spread them out and you know next year coming back, I mean, we've seen Josh Ferguson go through this program. We've seen uh, uh, Malin Jones go through the program. Ty Isaac and, and Tyler Reitz and I put Tyler Reitz in that group because I, I got to tell you, man, if Tyler Reitz is playing anywhere else, anywhere else, he's just as good there too. It's yeah, not no, just Joliet he, Catholic. It's not like, well, hey, you got a great offensive line. That kid's a stud too, and they're, they're and he got good. overshadowed a little bit by Isaac. And you know, listen, Isaac earned everything he's got. He holds himself well. He carries himself well, and and uh, he's going to USC for a reason. And you know what, USC, you guys are going to need him. No offense, uh, Ty, but uh, you know, you you uh, you Notre Dame fans are going to be. Uh, uh, you know, coming out of the woodwork this week with Notre Dame, USC playing each other, and USC has uh, is, is already lost four games this season, and they're and they're already talking about that. You know, they're already talking about that coach hitting the bricks. You know, like the, mm -hmm. there's a rumor that he might be gone. You know, and no matter what he does, and he's been downplaying that. You know, all last week. Um, you know about about being gone, but you know, Isaac may be going into a situation where listen, this you know. You're going to Division One, and all bets are off. And you know we'll talk about that more in the off season as we get to that. But the fact of the matter is, is you know Ty, uh, Ty, Tyler Reitz was a you know an extremely you know good player on there uh, and, and, a, and a good running back. And if he played anywhere else, I think he gets more accolades um, from other coaches. I just you know he was injured a bit this year too. So you know mm -hmm. especially towards the end of the season, he had a back issue I think, and and uh, he sat out a couple of uh, games and some plays and. You know, but at the end of the day, when 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 Joliet needed to get a stop, they couldn't get it done, and that's the bottom line. I don't care about everything else, you know, and I, you know, I'm sure people are not going to be happy with us not, you know, you know, cheering on uh, JCA win, lose or draw. We are cheering you guys on, but the fact of the matter is, we want to see this program 
every program that's out there. If you want to know why you're not in the state championship, you can't win. It's defense. Defense wins championships. What they say? It's not offense. I mean, and, and if and if that case wasn't proven last year, I don't know what was. Yeah. You know, when Montini and JCA play each other, you know, uh, and, and Isaac gets you know five six touchdowns and you know ridiculous amounts of yards, over 500 yards rushing that game. And you do that, and you still don't win the football game. That's got to tell you something. You know, that's there's a clue right there. You know, defense, you have to have defense, and that's why I like Lincoln Way East. I mean, I like Tom Fusel. I, you know, granted, they got a great offense. They've always had a good offense. Um, but it's their defense, man. I mean, their defense is, is gnarly. You know? Highbacker's best in the state. Well, you know, and pound for pound, Kyle, Kyle Langendorfer, I don't care how small he is, man, <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, Sugar Ray Robinson was pretty small too. And look how many years he had—he mm-hmm. had a, you know, he had a boxing belt around his uh, around his waist. You know, I mean, that guy. So I don't know. L- Lane Dorfer is, you know, just a, a special athlete, and uh, and you know, it's uh, it's all up here, man. Mm-hmm. It's all up here. It's not about. I mean, you, you, you look at you take a look at him, you think, eh, you know, yeah, he's big. He's a great wrestler. He's no, you know, state qualifier wrestler. The straight, you know. I mean, so this is a guy that that is a good athlete, no question about it. But you know, you should be—you know—if you're—if you're a 230-pound running back, you should be able to truck him. You ought to be able to truck him. I don't care. He's a—he's a—he's a 175 pound, 165 pound soaking wet. You ought to be able to truck him, and you're not. You know that that and that and what I'm saying is that I'm not again. I'm not saying this to down Kyle because we're obviously we think he's great, you know. But I'm just telling you that. You know, here's a kid that's 165 pounds, and he, and he is determining who's gonna who's gonna win the battle. Tech technique. It's technique. Technique. It's technique. It's 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 desire. You know. So if you're sitting on a sideline site right now and you're like, well, I you know I didn't play because the guy ahead of me was bigger or stronger. That's no. Nope. You know that has nothing to do with it. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want to play football. Nowadays, you got to play like Kyle Langendorfer. Yep. That's the way you play football. Yep. That's the way. I mean, if you look up the word football and look up defensive linebacker, you ought to see a picture of him. You know? Honest to God, you should see a picture of him. And, and because here's a guy that really didn't ever have the size. and But, man, he played like he was, you know, a pro. Mm-hmm. And he acted like it. And he carried himself. And he didn't take no he, well, he didn't take no uh, junk from nobody. Yeah, you got an unsportsman like Conrad Conrad. Yesterday, I mean. Well, I mean, but you know what though? That's the point. He's surly. You want that on it. You want that. He's a he's the he's a captain on the defense. You know, you got to dictate the tone, and I like that about him. I'm, you know, yeah. I mean, I don't like unsportsmanlike conduct. You know, like anybody, but you know, there's a lot of stuff that's unsportsmanlike conduct at the prep level that you know, I got to be honest with you. A lot of times, I don't agree with. I certainly, I have, I absolutely do not agree at all with with uh, the celebration thing in the in the end zone. I think if you get to the end zone and you score a touchdown, have at it. You want to do the 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 the, the, the shuffle, or you want to you know, you want to pop the top and drink it, and you want to dunk it. You want to do whatever you want to do. Let them have fun, man. That's what the game's about. This game has gotten to be too serious with the IHSA on some levels. I mean, some of the rules there, you know, they're talking about. Well, you know, it hurts the, you know, who does it really hurt? You know, you know, well, you know, I've heard somebody tell, you know, somebody's made the argument to me before that. Well, you know, it limits the amount of aggression between the two teams, you know, and you don't want any cheap shots later, and it's and it's unsportsmanlike to... No, it's not unsportsmanlike to celebrate. I don't think it is. I think it's, hey, I'm going to celebrate and celebrate my touchdown, and that's it. You know, I mean, if the other team can't take it, well, then stop them. You know, I mean, you know, for the love of God, this is, uh, this is America, right? You know, I mean, you're supposed to be able to, to, to celebrate your wins. I mean, God knows we have enough losses in the world. Enough losses. You know? So, I don't know, don't give me on that whole speech. But, you know, the bottom line is, you know, those two games were fantastic. Nequa Valley, though. Nequa Valley went down to Mount Carmel big. And uh, Joey Radigan, what did you call him the other day? He's a young, young Burt Reynolds. <laughs> Joey, Burt you, Reynolds. Call him, oh. you call him Joey? Joey Reynolds. Joey Reynolds, yeah. He actually called him Joey Reynolds. Joey yeah, Reynolds. yeah, he's mixed up. Joey Reynolds, yeah. He Joey does look Reynolds. like a... The longest yard, man. The longest yard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, 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 you know what? You give him a black jersey and a football, and tell him to start walking the other way. Yeah. You're some guy yelling out, crew, crew, yeah. you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. So, uh, yeah. Uh, but, you know, they held him to 24 yards. Yikes. 11 carries, 24 yards. Uh, he did not have a great game. Um, but he had a great, fantastic season. 
He was oh. he was a phenomenal talent. Just Mount Carmel came out and had a better game plan. You know, and Mount Carmel had some, you know, Mount Carmel took it to him. You know, maybe it had something to do with the old allure of Mount Carmel. You know, Nequa Valley's never been, they never even got to a quarterfinal game. They got to a quarterfinal, then they get to a semifinal. I mean, the pressure mounts a little bit, and, you know, maybe maybe it just didn't work out for them as well as it could have. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so again, we're going to see Mount Carmel, uh, you know, head down uh, south. Of, who are they taking on? Glenbard North? Glenbard North, yeah. Yeah, Glenbard North. So you got Glenbard North, you got Glenbard West. No Glenbard South, though. <laughs> no Glenbar South. No, no. they ain't, ain't not coming. They ain't not coming to the dance, but there are two Glenbards going up there. So that's got to tell you something about Glenbard football in general. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I mean, uh, so, I mean, it's like saying one of the, you know, two of the Lincoln Way schools being downstate at the same time, you know. Could happen. Could happen. So, uh, you know, again, we're going to have, uh, you know, and let's talk a little bit about Lamont. Lamont lost a heartbreaker at home. Pete Monee, last week we both thought Pete Monee is going to you know, blow right over them. 28-27, one hey, point game. One point. One point game. Like kissing your sister. Mm -hmm. Got to give it to Lamont. They had a great season this year. Mm -hmm. um, but again, falling short in the semis. You know, and, and that's got to get frustrating for Lamont. I mean, they just, I think once they get past the semis, that they'll actually have a real good shot of winning a state title. Mm -hmm. But they're in a tough bracket. They're on a tough side of the state every year. And they're going to run into somebody usually around the semis. You know, that's when they meet their match. And it's been the case the last few years where they have not been able to get over that hump. And, and uh, you know, to do it, to, to, to lose your final one at home, short bus ride home at least, but but uh, that's got to be tough, you know. But going into this, Creep Moni, we both thought, hey, they're going to blow through these guys. So you got to give credit to their defense and uh, and how they handled themselves and conducted themselves this season. And, and uh, so, unfortunately, their season's over. So... You know, for us, our area teams, we've got uh, two football teams downstate, though. We've got Montini downstate, and then we've got your boys, Lincoln Way East. Congrats, man. Lincoln Way East. Last year it was Montini and JCA, and so we had, you know, we had two teams, two of our teams yeah, facing Bowling, off. And Bolingbrook. Yeah, and then we had Bolingbrook, right? Bro Broke ain't coming unless they want to come right. with it. Unless a couple guys want to come with us on the ride there. Yeah. It's too bad, though. I gotta say, it's too bad that that Montini and Joy Catholic didn't play in the state championship game because that was like a state championship game. Because I'm gonna tell you what, Montini is gonna blast Morris. No. Oh come on, no. you yours. Okay, here we go. Let's no. let's get this over with right now because we got some more business no. to take care of. Don't 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 make my poor chops back up. Montini ain't gonna blast Morris. All right, here we go. Here we go. So. Uh, we're gonna pick the. Let's let's start off with the the, uh, the our five A. Uh, all right, I'm sorry. Five A, Morris Martini. Do you want to start off with seven A? Because I, no, have to ask I, you I know who's going to. I know who's going to. Okay. Seven all right, so let's start off with five A. Yeah, come on, five A. Mm -hmm. you, you get your tinfoil hat. You got to pull your tinfoil hat out. Let me know. Okay, so me up, magic, magic done. eight ball. What will be the score? Magic, 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 eight ball. What would be the score? Should we get music track to go with it? <laughs> yeah, magic, yeah. magic, eight ball. What would be the score? <laughs> okay, here you go. All right, so go ahead. Give me your score, because he's never wrong. Martini, Martini, and, Martini Morris. and Morris. Well, I'll tell you what. Martini defense, Morris defense. I take Morris's defense over Martini's defense. I've seen Morris play. Morris got big, strong, uglies on the defensive line. Bigger, stronger, ugly, faster linebackers, and they play a run through the tackles with the big, ugly offensive linemen. Uh... Uh, run through the tackles with big offensive alignment, too. Well, they got they got Jeff Perry at Morris, their linebacker, mm -hmm. who you know he had to be that 50, he had to be number fifty three because that was that, that guy was the best on the field. Yeah. Anyway, ball control, ball control. They're going to keep Montini's high powered offense off the field with ball control. Okay, Montini's going to have to stop Morris running right through the tackles. Okay, <sighs> score is going to be. I would say. Thirty-one. Here, hang on a second. Let me fix something, folks. Let me crank his head. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now you get some more batteries. Funny, okay. <laughs> now, funny, funny guy. No, no. Let's tell you. Nah, I'm not. Now what's the score? Now, nah, my Morris ain't gonna get thirty-one points. I'm gonna say. See, I fixed it. I'm gonna say twenty-four to seventeen, Morris. 24-17 Morris. You're picking Morris. Morris. Okay. Well, I like Coach Dorson. Morris. 
Okay, so you got Morris. Let me just go out on, on a limb here. And it's a real short one, and it's about that thick. And no one's going to cut me off of this one. Montini's going to win here. They're going to win big. Um, I, yeah, they are. Joe Borsellino's going to score at least three touchdowns in that football you think game. So? Yes. Hey, you know, he's going to score three touchdowns if it was the Joe Lake Catholic defense. But this is the Morris defense. Doesn't matter. Oh yes, they, this guy's faster, quicker, better, stronger, faster. Yeah, you know, listen, bigger, stronger, okay. faster. Whatever. What is he? The six million dollar man? Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's it. Break and rebuild him. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Listen, Montini's gonna go down there. They're gonna win forty to fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> dreamer, he's nothing but a dreamer. <laughs> oh my God, he's nothing but a dreamer. <laughs> All right. Everybody in Morris, Sorry, we, you know, does the times we this did this go to Morris? Yeah. Hey, everybody in Morris. I don't think so. You guys are gonna lose. I saw. I saw. Forty-one you, to four, I saw forty-one you guys to fourteen. Play, I said forty to fourteen. I meant forty-one to fourteen. I saw you. Had a point I, tonight. I, I saw you guys play Manuka, and you guys just destroyed their quarterback. Okay, Manuka and Manuka and, no, and Montini are two gonna, different. They're going to key on Mr. Borsellino. Okay? Montini, you guys got this. Congratulations on fourth row. Uh, it's no, like you, a dollar no, bill. No, you don't. Right? No, you, you, don't. you go from having change to having no, a you buck. Don't. Yeah, you know. no. Four a row. No. Yeah. No, all right. Three, so, three, okay. Three and a half. All right. So, we're already going to be arguing on the trip downstate. So, let's. I'd like to be a fly on the wall in that car, you know, with me and you going downstate. Oh, Wouldn't yeah. You? Oh, yeah. I'd love to be a fly on the wall with us two experts talking football all the oh, way. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, absolutely. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. I'd love to be a fly on the wall to listen to what Big Tone is thinking about. The concession stand. Well, I'm just thinking about the, the snacks that I'm going to be eating in the back seat. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. all I'm thinking yeah. about. Yeah, and no Twinkies. I don't like Twinkies. Yeah, well, apparently nobody else does either because yeah. they're going to be going out of business pretty soon. But okay. anyway, you know, so, all right, so let's talk about Lincoln Way West. It's east. Get it right. Mm. <laughs> it's Lincoln Way. East. East. <laughs> all right, let's, let's back up. <laughs> I was thinking Columbia West and Lincoln Way East at the same time. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Three, two, one. All right, let's talk about Lincoln Way West and... God damn it. Here we go. Three, two, one. Here we go. Ready? All right, let's talk about Lincoln Way East and Glenbard West. 7A game. Middle of the afternoon, we're going to skip over 6A and, and go right to the, to the beef of 7A. Can we, sit up in a, can we sit up in that big press box in the hospitality suite, too? Five six eight. You know, it you know, last year it was raining. It got a little nasty out. And and big wuss over here. I'm going upstairs because it's good. raining and windy and it was cold. And it's and it's cold. I don't do good in the rain. Yeah. Sorry. So he got to he went up in the hospitality suite with mm -hmm. all the other media guys and I'd love to be a fly in the wall with you up That's there. That's right. I'm not been you know, I'm not with the rest of the guys. Yeah. I'm coming. We're gonna yeah. I'm not again. Yeah, I'll stay on. I'll stay on the sidelines, and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, I like the I I like the crisp wind in my ear. I like to hear the the, the pads cracking. I, I I love it on the sidelines. That's where it's at. That's where the action's at. All right, um, you know I already can figure out what the Magic Eight Ball is going to say, but you know I'm going to go first this time because Lincoln Way East is your team, so I'm going to let you have the final word mm -hmm. on Lincoln Way East before we get into our all area team. Um, so. Um, I think this is going to be a close game. I don't think that this is going to be a, a blowout by any stretch. I think this is going to be a tough game for Lincoln Way East. I think it's going to be a tough game for Glenbard West. I don't think either team can walk into this game cocky. Um, I do think it's going to be a classic. I think it's going to be a lot. It's going to go a lot like what happened last year with Bolingbrook and Loyola. You know, uh, two real great football programs playing down. It's just going to come down to the fourth quarter. Uh, you Lincoln Way East guys that have been used to sitting uh, in the in the third and fourth quarter or coming out midway through the third quarter, you're going to be playing a full uh, 48 minutes here. You're not going to be sitting at all. Uh, they're going to need every man on deck. If you're going to win a state championship, it's going to take everybody on your staff, on your coaching staff, on your bench. Kids can't be looking on the bench up into the stands and waving to mom and dad and getting photo ops which doesn't happen on your team, I'm just saying, the focus has got to be, even if you're not playing, even if you're standing on the sidelines, you better be the best cheerleader that they've ever had because it's going to take every single person and every single fan to push Lincoln Way East to a championship. I think it's going to happen this year. I think that uh, Glenbard West, the last time they beat Lincoln Way East was at a quarterfinal game, as I started to say, 
uh, in Glen Ellen, and uh, they had a, uh, if I remember, my memory serves me correctly, they had a tight end that scored five touchdowns uh, against them. They were phenomenal, it was a phenomenal talent. And um, But I don't think you're going to see that this year. I don't think that you're going to see uh, five touchdowns coming from a tight end. And um, so, again, I, I think Lincoln Way East is going to win here, but I don't think it's going to be a huge spread. I think East is going to win here by eight. And uh, and I don't think that there's going to be a ton of scoring either. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think this is – I think this is this game's going to be a lot tighter than people think it's going to be. I'm going to call Lincoln Way East 28, Lombard West 20. That's it. That's what I think. Magic 8-Ball? Agrees. Okay. 28-20, that's a nice score, but I'll tell you what. Coach Rob Zolnar asked his team one question, one question only. Are you satisfied? They're not satisfied. These guys, business-like approach, they're not celebrating. They know that the job is not done. The job is not done. What's the difference between the quarterfinal game and this, this season? Too many weapons. Corbett, Galangelo, Winkler, uh, Fusel, good offensive line, go along with their outstanding defense. Okay? 28 to 7, Lincoln Way East. 28 to 7? 7. Mm hmm. Wow. I mean, you count these guys. You don't count their defense. Their defense, you got they'll find a way. They're, they got the best linebackers in the state. Playing. Oh, there's no question. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't dispute that, but I'll only tell you something. Glenbard West has got a lot. Glenbard West is built very similar to Lincoln Way East. I'm telling you. You know, and uh, so, well, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. He's going to call 28-7. I think that, that, that Glenbard West is going to get a few more points than that. I could be, I could be wrong. It's never happened before, but it could happen this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So, okay. so, uh, so we'll call. It, we'll, you know, we both think that Lincoln Way East is yeah, going to win here. It's their, it's their year, Team of Destiny thing. You know, a train going down to Champagne. So, so, so let me let me size you up for a jersey here, Co Coach Stone. Yeah. See, so you see get how, how, how it works. It, 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 see, see the, oh, get this bowling bread. Oh, oh, bowling bread. <laughs> <laughs> this is like kryptonite to Coach Tone. <laughs> well, maybe, just maybe, somebody's gonna get him a victory shirt. Uh, hopefully, they might. They might actually sell something that has Lincoln Way East on it. You can uh, buy it. I'll, I'll, I'll buy it. I don't care. Yeah, we'll it doesn't buy, matter. We'll, I, don't, I, don't, I don't need. We'll, we'll, I don't need stuff. Like I said, we'll, 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 we'll buy you. We'll buy you a spandex Lincoln me, Way East Griffin shirt. Me, me, and, me and the rooster are gonna watch, and I'm gonna say this is what a real team looks like on a victory stand. Okay, no, no <laughs> fakes. The eleven and undefeated victory team. Okay, uh, what is it? Undefeated. Eleven and all. That whatever and all. <laughs> okay, whatever. Yeah, okay. What do you go? Hey, wait, 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 wait. Let me crank your head up again. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, all right. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Here we go. All right. So, uh, folks, yeah, and if you're laughing at me right now because the rooster's got to wear glasses, yeah, I do. I got to wear glasses to read small type because we have here, you know, we can read on this, right? Hmm? Do I have a grant? Yeah, we all do. As long as if it's all right with you, boss, I don't care. All right, so we're good. So we're gonna. So this is uh, uh, Rooster and Big Tones uh, all area football team for 2012, mm -hmm. and uh, we've done this the last three years in a row. Mm -hmm. We put a lot of time and energy into choosing our our players. We do it throughout the season. Uh, we see a lot of different games. We see a lot of tape. Mm -hmm. uh, I may not be able to be at seven or eight games a week, but we got guys the Sports Nest. Is there seven or eight games a week? We see a lot of film. We see a lot of stuff in the off season. Mm -hmm. We see a lot of kids in the weight room. We see a lot, and and I'm going to tell you that you may not agree. Not everybody's going to agree with everybody that's on here, and they may think, hey, you left somebody off. Or you left. The people that are on here, we feel very good about, and uh, and they they've made this list. Uh, we have a first team, a second team, and an at large uh, group of players that that that. You know, we're borderline. They were right there, but it, you know, it was a toss-up. We had to look at stats. We looked at some other things. We looked at uh, a lot of intangibles uh, when they're on the line like that. But uh, ultimately, I, I think this list speaks for itself. So let's let's start off with uh, our at-large kids. 
um, you know, this year. Let's talk about Kurt Palandak. Kurt Palandak, a uh, quarterback from Plainfield North, uh, a playoff football team. He's had a great career there. Uh, he's a senior. He'll be going. Uh, let's talk about David Edwards at Downers Grove North. He's also a quarterback. Mm -hmm. He's going to be there for a while. And, Sophomore. You know, and, and uh, had an incredible run there in the postseason. Christos Giotaris from Lamont, a running back. Uh, Lamont, you know, he, you know, he, he basically against Oak Forest in that in that uh, mm -hmm. um, in that win last week uh, over Oak Forest. He was the, he was a driving factor there, and, and uh, so Christos Giotaris, uh, Brandon Price from uh, Providence. Uh, you know, I know Providence didn't get as far uh, as they'd like to get this year, but they wouldn't have gotten there without Brandon Price. Brandon Price started their season off with a seventy-five yard run mm -hmm. against. Jolie Catholic in week one, literally the first play from scrimmage, and it didn't stop for him all season long, uh, except for Lincoln Way East who put the kibbutz on him. But, but in any say, event, I, I didn't say it, he did. Mm -hmm. Great, great, uh, great, great athlete, great player. Mm -hmm. uh, Jordan Ellingwood, running back from Plainfield Central, another great mm -hmm. player, great wrestler as well. Uh, Max Brozovich uh, from yeah. Manuka. Max, Good. you know, Max moved to tight end uh, into running back, and, and you know, I got to tell you, man, maybe if he played. Running back a little bit more often. I mean, he's a great tight end too. So, and his brother was a pretty good player himself who was graduated. But anyhow, Max Brozovich, congratulations. Mm -hmm. Devon Goodloe from Plainfield Central, another good wide receiver, uh, very athletic, mm -hmm. uh, uh, can you know can do a lot of great things. Corey Rogers from Joliet West. Uh, don't want to forget about Corey Rogers. Corey Rogers, uh, wide receiver, Joliet West, and a running back. He kind of did both, mm -hmm. but. Uh, uh, Trust me, the Tigers relied on Corey Rogers. Corey Rogers was uh, the bulk of their their offensive uh, uh, you know prowess this year. Adam Slattery, wide receiver from Lincoln Way West, he had a great season yeah. this year. Mm -hmm. Eric Swenson, offensive lineman for Downers Grove South, and let me just tell you, freshman. He's a freshman. He's the only freshman in our short history of four years of Sports Nest and probably now going on seventeen years of of sports coverage for me personally. Uh, first time I've ever taken a freshman on my all area team, and uh, but you know there's a reason why six seven, close to three hundred pounds, solid muscle. Let me tell you something. If you don't know who this kid is, you're gonna find out real soon. Adam Slattery, I'm sorry, uh, Eric Swanson, uh, Tony Pendleton, offensive lineman for Oswego East. Although they didn't have a great year, he did. Tough Borland, my second ever. Freshman. I had to have two freshmen this year. I don't know why. I mean, but we picked two freshmen this year because they earned it. Mm -hmm. Tough Borland from Bolingbrook, a linebacker freshman. He's going to be something special. Uh, so look out for him uh, in the coming years. I mean, he's going to lead Bolingbrook back into the state finals. I know it. Next season, maybe. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Quincy Woods. I'm sure you're Quincy. They, they're let all out coming of the, back. Let out of the woods, yeah. They're yeah. All coming, oh, back. Oh, coming back. Connor O'Brien, linebacker from Lamont. Congratulations! He's a linebacker. Uh, had, you know, again, their defense was something tough this year. They they were tough all season long. Shane Blighty from a uh, linebacker from Plainfield Central, another kid that kept them in a lot of games. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, uh, uh, Plainfield Central had a, a a pretty a pretty decent season, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I mean, they did make it to the playoffs. They just ran into you know the buzzsaw mm -hmm. at Lincoln Way East. Kevin Ward, another kid, defensive back from Providence Catholic, and and he was a threat. He was a threat to score um, on defense. Mm -hmm. You put the ball in the air, you had to worry about Ward being around the ball. And uh, so congratulations to our at-large players. Our second team second guys. Team. Oh. Well, our second team guys are going to be a little bit different than our, than our all-area uh, uh, at-large players. We're going to talk about, uh, we picked two quarterbacks for our second team because it was a toss-up. Um, we're gonna, we, we stuck with Aaron Bailey, a quarterback for Bolingbroke. Uh, but Aaron was injured a little bit after week six and uh, didn't get a lot of playing time, um, so it was a you know it was kind of a toss up. Um, but for us, uh, Craig Slowick from Joliet Catholic, yeah, I got to say something about Craig Slowick. He deserves um, to be there. Had he not done as well as he did with his running game in a shambles at times, it was never together all season long. Mike, you know Mike Ivlo. You know, had a great season. Mm -hmm. Tyler Reitz, you know, and Ty Isaac. But let me tell you something. Not, you know, it was either Ivlo. They had to lean on Ivlo as a fullback, and they had to they had to look at Craig Slowick's arm. So congratulations to Craig Slowick. You deserve it. And I'm sorry, Craig, as a senior, that I ever caught you 
from a football team. Because, <laughs> you know, got I got to throw that out there. Oh, you know, that, that, that he got, you know, so, mm -hmm. so on his way out, thank you very much. It's been great watching you and became a fan. Mikhail Stewart, All-State running back from Oswego. And uh, you're probably wondering to yourself, how can an All-State player be on our second team? Well, we've got a lot of All-State players this year. And uh, Mikhail did have a great season for Oswego. Mm -hmm. Uh, did some great stuff. Nick Colangelo, running back from Lincoln Way East. Um, I thought Nick did a, had a great season, and, mm -hmm. and uh, he definitely, his season's not over. He's still got time to go. Uh, Tyler Reitz, running back from Joliet Catholic. Again, compliment to Ty Isaac in, the bat, in, that, in that powerful backfield, and also got to run as a fullback with Malin Jones and Isaac the year before. He did get a chance to play in the state finals, so congratulations to Tyler Reitz. Justin Corbett, wide receiver from Lincoln Way East, another player that, that you're big on tone. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what's uh, what, what? What do you think? You know, really, what what was that pick for him? And what, what what did you see out of him this season that you thought, wow? Yeah, he's a dual dual threat. He's, he kick, uh, kick returns, punt returns. He's he gets uh, quarter mounted wide receiver, or you can uh, halfback. I mean, he's all all everything kind of guy. You know, all to purpose. Plus, he's an all-purpose guy, and plus, you know, he he, uh, you know, it's him and Colangelo take a lot of pressure off a of Fusel when mm -hmm. Fusel's getting tired after running two hundred plus yards. Inside, and, inside, and inside, outside. Yep, inside, outside. Mm -hmm. So, next player, uh, next wide receiver is Chris Tashida from Joliet Catholic. He's an all-state shortstop for their baseball team. Came back, didn't play last year, but came back to help his team out this year. Had a wonderful season, mm -hmm. and uh, and he should be commended too for 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 coming back and and sticking with this guy. So, J.P. Quinn, offensive lineman for Nequa Valley, mm -hmm. and let me tell you, great, you'd love him. You were always an offensive line guy and a defensive big, guy. You'd love this kid. Big guy, yeah, big guy, big, tough, strong. Jacob Hall, offensive lineman from Plainfield South, another great kid. You know, they didn't have a great season this year, Plainfield South, but they had a better season than we predicted at the beginning of the year. And, yeah. and uh, he was a big part of that, big reason for that. Jordan Smith, offensive lineman for Oswego. Again, Oswego's always big. they got a great offensive line. They're always big. Blake King, offensive lineman from Manuka. And Nick Allegretti, from off, offensive lineman from Lincoln Way East. And he's only a junior. Yeah. But uh, we we really see a lot of great things in in uh, in him, and I think next year he's going to be tops of the list. I mean, I think he's the next great offensive lineman to go somewhere. So, mm -hmm. you know, and and uh, but again, our offensive lineman, uh, second team, that that'll wrap them up. Uh, let's move on to our tight end pick, uh, Kiefer Kettlehut, tight end from Plainfield North. Kiefer Kettlehut. Yep, big, tall, burly, plays basketball too. Uh, he's a junior. He'll next year mm -hmm. um, and uh, just another kid that you're going to hear a lot about uh, and a lot of catches but it's not just his catches it's his ability you know, to, to block mm -hmm. you know defensive ends are mo some of your most athletic guys on defense and you really got to be able to that left tackle the blind side tackle yep. on offense is probably the highest paid position on the offensive line other than the center you know in the uh, NFL most sought after did they have a movie about the left tackle the blind side yeah there you go oh, okay, okay. Yeah. was just, that it yeah yeah, yeah, yeah okay. I think so uh, J.B. Butler, from, a defensive lineman from Joliet Catholic. Congratulations. Uh, he was in on that stop was for, he? for Lincoln Way West. What else did he do? Yeah, he did a lot. I mean, he you know he blocked the he blocked the field goal oh, yesterday oh. Uh, against Montini, and you know he was a stopper. He was a run stopper. A stopper. lot of kids. A lot of kids. You know. You know. We talk about Joliet Catholic's defense. Hold on a second. A lot of people didn't really. Uh, where you got here? Where you going? Where you going? I'm just eyeballing these bottle caps while he's yakking. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, keep talking. All right, so uh, JB Butler, congratulations on a on a on a great on a great year. Uh, Brandon Reyes, defensive lineman for Plainfield South, another great, fantastic player. Charles Mekla, defensive end for Bennett, and I know that he probably didn't show up. Uh, you know, that probably didn't look like he showed up in that first half against Lincoln Way East, but an outstanding. Uh, player, it's going to be well recruited, mm -hmm. um, you know. So I think there's a future still for him. He'll definitely be playing Saturday football. Fred Bogard, uh, defensive end for Montini Catholic. Enough said. Fred, you were there last year. You're there this year. You're going to have one, two, three, maybe three rings. So congratulations, Fred. Brett Fox, linebacker from Plainfield North. Uh, Brett again is a kid that has played as linebacker three seasons at, at the varsity level. And he also played a little bit of tight end this year and, uh, He's got a and cool name wide too. receiver. Cool name, too. Yeah, he does have a cool name. Brett Fox. And Brett Fox played for us. Really? Yeah. 
Did you like the pizza and the candy day? <laughs> Did you? Yeah. Brendan Rampa, linebacker from Plainfield. Brendan Rampa. Brendan Rampa. Well, he knows who I'm talking about. Yeah. So congratulations, Brendan. He had a great season at Plainfield East. Plainfield East did not have a great season in terms of wins, but uh, some very good football went on there. And, and uh, yes, sir, no, sir kind of player. Very, very tough. Very, very quick. Um, and, you know, he's being looked at by several schools. Academically, he is extremely uh, talented academically. So he will be playing Division One football, I'm sure, somewhere just because of his grades on top of the fact that the kid can lay the smack down and lay the lumber. So congratulations, Brian Rampa. Adam O'Grady, you'll like this. Adam O'Grady, linebacker, he deserves it mm -hmm. uh, at Lincoln Way East. And, you know, uh, you know, you talk a lot about, about – I talk about Kyle. I talk about O'Grady too, but O'Grady definitely, mm -hmm. you know, definitely O'Grady. Uh, he used to break to his or lacquer. Yep, I mean he, he, you know, he can lay the smack down. Mm -hmm. So, so, uh, and his season's not over yet. We'll see more of him next week. Sean Doherty too is out there. Uh, Joshuan Franklin, linebacker for Plainfield South. He was uh, a lot like O'Grady. Mm -hmm. He was kind of behind another linebacker on his team that was just sensational. And he got a lot of accolades early, and is probably going to go pretty high in the Division One area. I mean, you know, he's being recruited by some big time schools. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeshwan, I'm going to tell you, I saw him a couple of times this season, and you're every bit as good uh, as 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 your counterpart is, and every bit as good as, as some of the other linebackers on this list. And and uh, I hope um, that Jeshwan gets some looks. I hope he gets a lot more looks than he's gotten mm -hmm. uh, to this point. He's got a few. But, uh, you know, like these kids always say, they can always use a few more. Trust me, if you haven't seen Jashwan play, go get their game film coaches because I'm sure you're missing one, a, a diamond in the rough there. Uh, Marty McGrail, defensive back, Plainfield North. Again, had a great football season this year. Um, I think it was a little tough for these guys. I mean, uh, you know, they had some, their ups and downs uh, during the year. Uh, Oswego was their nemesis this year. They lost twice to Oswego. Um you know, so we go as we go, huh? Yep. So, and Giovanni Herberta, uh, the kicker from Plainfield East, and uh, Giovanni. Uh, and Berta? Yep. We're well, here in the NFL, man. Yeah, we are. Extra point now, Giovanni Herberta. Yeah, well, let me tell you something. It's not just extra point. This kid can hit a 50 yarder, and it's, I mean, literally, he's mm -hmm. kicking them 50 yards. I mean, it's, you know, if you can kick field goals like that at the prep level, yeah, you're going to go somewhere if you've got the academics. And, so therein lies our second team, Coach Tone, and and uh, you know I think everybody to this point we all agree, you know, you know it's pretty good. I, I I don't hear see the Dan Train's name, but what are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, and now let's move on to our first team. Um, we both agreed that this was uh, without a doubt probably uh, you know the easiest first team to pick. I mean, it wasn't that difficult to pick our first team this year. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of the kids on this team are. All state players, and uh, and they deserve their spot. So let's talk. Uh, first player on the list. Uh, let's let's pick our quarterback of the year. Quarterback of the year. Oh, where's the trouble, man? Yeah, there you go. It's your boy, Tom Fusel, quarterback. Lincoln Ways. Lincoln Ways, state champion. What do you think? I mean, he deserves. No it. doubt. No doubt. No yeah, doubt. absolutely. He's a runner. He's a thrower. I mean, he's you, you like the, the the great defensive man. Bill Bill just says, for a running throwing quarterback, you can't you can't stop the run. You can't stop the you got the pass. You stop the pass. He's still gonna run and run the ball. Right, so. right. And you know, and he, like I said, I mean, it, we say it every week almost. I think I think Tom Fusel's name's been mentioned more on cheap seats this year than than Aaron Bailey's. Well, his dad gave me. They gave me twenty bucks. Mention <laughs> my kid's name, my cheap seats. Yeah. I don't think. Trust me, I, I don't think Tom, Tom needs the, us to, to, yeah, to promote mention, him. Yeah, mention this you know? kid. I mention my kid on the cheap his, seats. His, his, hey, his. I got a question, Mister Fusel, out there. Can we get on the bus with you guys and the fifty-six Fusel family members? <laughs> there you go. Um, I mean, we're going to come down and party with everybody just, at Lincoln Way East. Just, ask, sure. just, just asking, okay? <laughs> All right, here we go. So uh, our our next player, Joey Radigan. Running back, Nequa Valley, absolutely yeah, deserved that. Deserved Earned it. it. Deserves He's it. an All-State player. He made the All-State team. He made our All-Area team. Uh, but we talked about him throughout the playoffs, towards the end of the season. Radigan mm -hmm. made a huge difference uh, all season long and against... 
Bolingbrook, he had a phenomenal game. And against, uh, you know, Wabonzi Valley, he had a phenomenal game. We got to see both those games and, and uh, just, you know, absolutely deserves it. Next player uh, at running back, Ty Isaac, Joliet Catholic. Enough said. Enough said. USC bound. Uh, running back, maybe the best this state has seen in a long, long time as far as pure running back mm -hmm. size, ability, strength. Got a lot going for him. Going to a great program at USC. Omar Stovar, running back, running back from Bolingbrook. Uh, again, Omar um, had a fantastic season for the Raiders. And uh, you know, when when Aaron Bailey went down, they had to rely on on Stovar to, mm -hmm. to come up with the big plays, and he did time and time again. Yeah, and uh, certainly earns that. So Omar Stover, congratulations. Uh, at wide receiver. Oh. He, he's, he, he's a little small in the draw here today. Jack Toner, wide receiver. Damn. Damn. Wow. That's a good, that's a good pick. He's a good, know, he's a good receiver. Jack Toner, all state. Jack Toner, and uh, you know, can, you know, I let me just put my glasses down for a minute and just say that I, you know. I, I, I think that the team that impressed me the most all season long is Bennett. From going from a 1-8 and eight program to a semifinal game. Yes, you ran into Lincoln Way East. Yes, it was a tough, tough contest and they're a great football team. But you're a great football team too. And you know why you're a great football team? Because you got off the canvas. You did something about it in the offseason. And to me, you're a champion. You don't need a trophy. You don't need a shiny metal trophy to prove that you guys are champions. Well, it'd be nice. It'd be nice. But Jack Toner, a big reason why uh, Bennett mm -hmm. got to that point. So congratulations to Jack Toner. Our next wide receiver, this is no secret, Joe Borsellino from Montini. Wide receiver and just another phenomenal talent. And, you know, just ask JCA how yeah. good he is, oh, you yeah. know. So uh, we'll see him downstate next week. Uh, at offensive line, Colin McGovern from Lincoln Way West. So congratulations. Uh, outstanding football player, all-state football mm -hmm. player. Ethan Posick at Lamont and his teammate Tim McAuliffe at Lamont. Both offensive linemen, both all-state players. You wonder why their running game is so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you wonder why the running game is so good and you wonder why... You know we, you know we were able to, to to, you know, take a look at who we thought would would be there at the end. You know when we talked about Christos being there, well he can thank those two guys because they, you know they 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 cleared the path for him. So congratulations to to those two players at Lamont, Payson Wick over at Homewood Flossmoor. I know we haven't talked about Homewood Flossmoor a lot because they got knocked out early in the offensive mm -hmm. line, but but uh, Payson fantastic season. Um, Tyler Lancaster, Tyler Lancaster at Plainfield East. And he's a Nest favorite. Mm -hmm. Well, he's a Nest favorite, but he's also a Northwestern favorite because he's going to be playing football next year at Northwestern. He did not make All-State this year. Mm -hmm. uh, that may have had something to do with you know the, the team that he played for this year because a lot of the All-State stuff, they kind of, you know, the coaches' polls kind of thing. Sometimes, you know, they're looking at the winning teams and you know, that kind of stuff. But, mm -hmm. but in any event, Tyler Lancaster... Fantastic uh, young man. He played center for, for Plainfield East and uh, will be playing football next season at uh, Northwestern University. Uh, Danny Friend, tight end, Morris. Fantastic season. Mm -hmm. Great player. And if, uh, and if you're Montini, you might want to watch Danny Friend because you know, he's definitely a weapon for them. And, and uh, they're going to have to chalk him and keep him off the ball. And they're going to you know, they're gonna have to put some pressure on that quarterback, like you say. But I still think it's not going to be a... Yeah, so here we go. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, defensive end, um, this is a fantastic pair. Now, we talked about a pair of, a pair of guys at, at Lamont. There's a pair of guys that, were, again, we're not on a, a fantastic football team in terms of wins uh, this season, but let's put them together. Grant Bartell, defensive end, and Evan Panfield, defensive end, both at Lincoln Way Central. Yeah, and um, I like that pick. And they were they were phenomenal. I mean, they're both two bookends, both immensely talented, both highly recruited. Big, strong, and ugly. Big, strong, and ugly. So congratulations to you folks uh, to, to to that defensive line. I said it, mm -hmm. you know, when they when they walked off the field at at, uh, at Bolingbrook, that that may be the best defensive line I've seen on the, in the state all season long. Mm -hmm. And and uh, so congratulations to them. The other defensive uh, lineman, also an all state player. Who made all state? So I'm I'm pre-qualifying that before you get cute with me. Is uh, 
is Bryce Douglas from Plainfield Central. Which is, you know, you know, and again, a phenomenal talent. Bryce Douglas, Plainfield Central. Coach John Jackson. Yep, Coach John Jackson. John Jackson. <laughs> you, say, you say that like that, you know. Like Keith Jackson. Yeah, like, like Keith Jackson. Yeah, Keith Jackson. Can you good, good, some good, good pick. Yeah, it's good a very pick. good pick. Very good, good coach, pick. good pick, good team. You know, and congratulations on also making the All-State uh, football team. Uh, let's talk about, um, oh, where did we leave off at? Bryce Douglas. Oh, Bryce Douglas. Okay, so here we go. We're moving on to defensive line, Jordan Smith. Jordan Smith, defensive lineman, Oswego. Oswego's defense, phenomenal all season long. I mean, they hardly gave up. They hardly gave up a first down, let alone eight points. Until they hit Bennett. Until they hit Bennett. And right. it's Bennett sent him home. And Bennett sent him home. Uh, Jeff Perry, linebacker from Morris. We talked about him earlier in our broadcast, and, and Perry's the real deal. He's big, ugly, fast, mean, tackles. Oof. Yep, yep. I mean, he's the real Orsimino. deal. Orsimino. I yep. better watch him. <laughs> typical, typical redskin, uh, you know, right. out at Morris. I mean, just he's run a away, burly, run, tough guy. Run away from him. <laughs> yeah, run away from him. Uh, this is no shock to you either, but, I, you know, I'll say that he made all state, too. You've been preaching this kid for three years. Langendorfer? Yep. Kyle Langendorfer. Little, little Kyle Langendorfer. Kyle Langendorfer, State. linebacker for, for Lincoln Way East. He Five, made our first six, team. 160. Yep. And he deserved it. I mean, oh, yes, we he found does. out we found out later that, that he did make the All State team, which is congratulations. I'm That's glad right. you made the All State team, but you deserve that too. But you deserve that too. But congratulations, you made our squad and, and our team. And that did it, you know. That's right. Number one, Tony Tough guy out there, Kyle Langendorf. Now here's a kid that no one's going to pick out of the out of the rice. No, you know. But not, let me tell you something. If you don't know about this kid's name and you don't remember this kid's name, you will sometime around January when it comes signing day. For for Division One college football or February, whenever that signing day is, I believe Mr. Langendorfer is a wrestler. He's yeah. going to Illinois for a wrestling scholarship, which is dumb. But then yeah. again, maybe Illinois—they're not that good of a football team. Maybe they can use you out in the linebacker. Oh, uh, they can use you. But this next kid uh, is what, what I was talking about with Caleb Bailey. Mm -hmm. Caleb Bailey at Romeoville. Romeoville went zero and nine this year. Caleb Bailey made. Probably 70% of the tackles on that football team, or he was in on 70% of the tackles on that football team. And he was such a great athlete that they put him in the backfield and gave him the ball. And he's not really a running back, mm -hmm. but if you give an athlete the ball, he can become whatever he wants to become. And mm -hmm. he ripped off a couple of big runs this year for Romeville. Had that long touchdown run we caught earlier in the season on a fourth and one play. He got like 55-yard run right up the gut. Had another big one against uh, 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 Plainfield South. Great, great football player. Make sure you remember that kid's name, Caleb Bailey. You will be hearing about him. He'll be going to probably, hopefully, he'll be going to Michigan. He's been, I'm telling you, he's being recruited by top Division one schools. Michigan. So, so I, Michigan. I, yeah, I'm just keep my fingers crossed. Oh my you know, god, he's going to be a great one. Another great one out of the SBC. Um, even though the SBC has nobody in in the state final game, uh, Clifton Garrett playing field South. Yeah. Another fantastic, fantastic uh, linebacker. You put those four linebackers out there. And you might just be able to win with four guys. You put those four guys out there, you might be able to take on an offense with those four guys. I don't know, man. I mean, they're not good. They really are. Yeah, okay. You know, they're pretty good. So, um, moving on, defensive back, Dennis Thoreau, Nico Valley. Nico Valley had a fantastic season. He was a big reason for that. Mm -hmm. You know, they were able to stop the pass. They were able to keep people on their toes. They were able to put pressure you know, on you know, on quarterbacks, but but uh, he picked off quite a few this year. Had a great season for for Naperville, and uh, so De De Dennis Thoreau, congratulations, uh, defensive back from Nequa Valley High School. Uh, de the other defensive back on our first team is Corbett Alton from a defensive back from Manuka, and I know you talked about Manuka all season long. That you know, they were kind of like you know, they, they were right there all the time. It seemed like you know, you think that they're gonna like mm -hmm. go on a roll. And any time they were going to go on a roll, they just didn't get it done this year. But Corbett had a great season. Uh, congratulations, Corbett, on making uh, our our first team, uh, all area team at Manuka. Um, and our final player, final player, da, da, da. <laughs> Andrew Hardy. We don't have sound effects. Sorry. Andrew Hardy is a kicker and a punter for Montini and. Let me tell you something. He's one of the big reasons why I think Montini has got got this game in the bag. 
I mean, he might he might throw four. He might get twelve points just off a of field goal. Oh my god. So hey, we just we just want to congratulate everybody. And this list, by the way, we will publish uh, up on our website. So if you guys want to come back and peruse Wait, so through website? it, yeah, yeah, you know, cool. Yeah, we've got you know the Times Weekly. Oh, oh, Times Weekly. Yes. Mm. So you know, so we will we will definitely get this list published for you. And and uh, we still have some unfinished business, but we will not make our coach of the year and our player of the year. We have an offensive player of the year. We have a defensive player of the year. Last year we just did a player of the year, right? So we don't want to do just a player of the year. We no, gonna, we're not going to. We're going to do a defensive. The defensive guy's got to get credit too. Right. I mean, so we're going to do. You know, your Ty Isaacs, your Aaron Bailey's, your uh, Tommy Fuselas. We need like guys like Langendorfer, uh, Clifton Garrett, and the rest of the guys. We need those guys to get their credit too. Yeah. So this year we're going to do it a little bit differently. Uh, after the state final uh, game, you know, so when we get back from state finals. We will announce uh, in early December um, who our coach of the year is going to be, who our offensive player of the year is going to be, who our defensive player of the year is going to be, and, of course, Coach Tones, who had the best concession stand. Who I'm telling you, Illinois, Illinois <laughs> Benedictine College, man. Connie's Pizza. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. So was, that, was that the best? No. Okay. No, I mean it's, it's college. Come on, yeah. County's Pizza yeah. College. Jeez, yeah. but yeah. pizza was good though. Oh yeah. boy! So hey, it's been a fantastic football season, and congratulations to all the teams that lost and won in the playoffs. Congratulations to all the players who finished their football season uh, with their head held high. No matter how you finish the football year, I love that have their head held high, head held high though. Well, you know, I, I, I beg to differ, though. I think that there are kids out there that, that despite being on a losing football team in terms of uh, record that they're going to find looking back, mm -hmm. um, that it may have been the best days of their lives. And best you won't days. get those days back, you know. You just don't get them back. And 1987 was one of the best years of my life. But look, we won't go into that. We won't go into a whole other session. Uh, of uh, uh, of Doctor Thrill back there back in Rio de Janeiro, when I was in the service, uh, the club tango. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna give Coach Tone a, a couch, and mm -hmm. and then I can put my glasses on and, and and play psychiatrist and say, okay, tell me, you know, what was your best year? And <laughs> so, <laughs> so hey, hey, but you know what? It's been fantastic. It's been a lot of fun. We really enjoyed this show. Um, no, yeah, we, you know, no, we during don't. football. No, we don't enjoy the show. Yeah, yeah. you don't enjoy the show. Yeah, I got yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You yak for an hour, you know. <laughs> Are we done yet? Yeah, <laughs> we're done. So hey, we want to we want to thank you for joining us this week on Cheap Seats. Uh, it's been a fantastic uh, year to this point. Uh, basketball starts for us on Monday. Uh, we're going to start our basketball coverage uh, starting this Monday. That's where I go back into the to, I go back into the closet until next August or football no, season. No, not this year. I, so uh, you, you, I still have to stay. You still got to. Oh stay. my god! So we'll be covering some wrestling and some next, basketball next, next week. If I'm here still, you who and a stale donut right uh, here. Yeah, you who yeah. stale donut. So here we go. So we'll pick it up. Uh, we got uh, some tournaments to catch before we head downstate next week. We'll be out at the WJOL Classic at, at the University of St. Francis to catch a lot of good teams out there uh, that way. And then uh, we're going to head downstate uh, on Friday and, uh, and and join the party. We want to get down there and do a little... I'd like to be a fly on the wall in that car, let me tell you, with Andy, you, me, yeah, you know. and Senior. Oh, yeah, man, yeah. I'd like to be a fly on the wall. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a lot of fun, so uh, but we'll, we're going to catch you guys next week. We may even do parts of our show live from the state. What do you think? Maybe do some... We don't do live. Why? Yeah, when he says, Let's, it's live, we're taping. Okay, <laughs> yeah. okay come yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're a lot. So we should say we are alive in the sport. This is actually, it comes out on Thursday. We're actually doing this on Sunday, okay? Oh, dude. Wait, I gotta go back. You can't tell them when we Don't tell them when we tape. Why? Because it's a newspaper, it comes out on Thursday. Oh. Uh, okay. You know what I mean? So you don't want to tell me you taped it five days earlier. Uh, yeah. So, so we have to pick somewhere off when we picked off. Well, we'll talk about going downstate, I guess. Talk about going, we'll catch you next week. Oh, I have to go back farther than that, so let's look at the camera. We'll go to, um... I'd like to be a fly on the wall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay, so you say that. I'd like to be a fly on the wall when we go on stage <laughs> yeah. with Andy, the rooster, senior in Big Town. Yeah. The conversations will just be lively, intriguing, and very fun.
Yeah, very fun. Yeah, so here we go. But, you know, hey, listen, we're going to see all you folks down there uh, that, that, are, that are making the trip. Even if you didn't make it into the state championship, I'd highly advise that you go down and buy a ticket. It's, yeah, it's a, a heck lot of, it's a lot lot of, of fun. A lot of fun. You don't know what you're missing. You, you know, and I always said that before, you know, to our football teams. Uh -huh. It's like, you know, let's go and watch a championship game. Some parents and kids didn't want to stay and watch it. You know, they didn't want to come out the next week because, hey, we lost. I want to. I want to see it. I want to watch it. You know, you know? I'll, I'll, I'll kid aside with Bolingbrook last year. I mean, when they were on the podium in the stands, man, it was, yeah, it was, it, it was a fantastic. It was yeah. a sense of pride for us. Yeah. Because we, like I said, we know a lot of those kids. We coach a lot of those kids, and a lot of, lot of, lot of fun. Yeah, you know, and, you know, and this year we've got at least two teams or three teams that we're really pulling for. I mean, mm -hmm. you got Morris. Uh, you know, Morris is in our in our coverage area now, and you know, we we'll kind of expand that a little bit. And, uh, you know, for, for next year. And, and then we've also got, uh, you know, Montini and Lincoln Way East. So we've got three teams down there we're really going to be pushing for, two of them facing off against each other. Uh, it ought to be a heck of a time. We will do some live taping down there or some, you know, some taping uh, uh, at the at the state tournament for next week's cheap seats. I mean, I think that would be kind of cool. Yeah. You know, tape some stuff. Maybe we'll, get some, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll tape in the stands with the parents, parents of Lincoln Way East. We'll tape with the parents. Mr. Allegretti and Tom. Uh -huh. Well, you, know, you sit by the parents, and I'll, sit, I'll tape you from the parents uh -huh. so I don't get strangled. Well, you get strangled. <laughs> the rooster, come on. Rooster, rooster, everybody loves the rooster. Okay? There you go. Enough, All right. Are we done yet? All right. I think we're done. So, hey, we want to thank you for tuning in for another week of Cheap Seats. We'll catch you guys next week. Um, always, you know. State championship to report Co on. Coach, Lincoln Way East coach, Zolnar, fire that train up. Woo -woo! Time to go to Champagne. get all the guys on board. We'll be there too. Uh, like I said, Mr. Fuso Jr., if you got room in the bus, 56 people, if you can add two more, you know, just give, me, give us a holler, all right? We'll love to ride down there with you guys. So, uh, so we'll catch you guys next week. We'll be back to report on Lincoln Way, hopefully Lincoln Way East victory and, uh, and a Montini victory. Hey, I want to see him get four in a row. Morris, Morris. I want to see him get four in a row. So, hey, but hey, we'll catch you guys next week. We'll also have some basketball to report on at the WJOL Classic at the University of St. Francis. It's kicking off the our basketball coverage for the season. And uh, so good luck to all the basketball teams that will be taking, taking to, the, uh, to the courts all over Illinois as March Madness, IHSA, is the founder of, of, uh, of basketball. My eyes roll back in my head. Did they do that again? Hope nobody saw that. Yeah, ISHA is the founder of March, they March Madness. There, they are. let me get my Dick Vitale voice going. Basketball is here, everybody. Let's have some fun. <laughs> well, we will see all you folks out there. We have some basketball to report on, some wrestling to report on, and uh, and then obviously the state championship. So we'll catch you right here, only on cheap seats. Everybody, stay safe out there. <laughs>